Welcome back to our series about Storyist for Mac OS. In this video, I'm going to show you. I'm Javis Lewis, by the way, in case you don't know me. Uh, I, in this video, I'm going to show you how to track writing goals in Storyist. The writing goals, if you're not familiar with the idea, they're popular with competitions like NaNoWriMo or Camp NaNoWriMo, which I believe is in progress right now. I think, yeah, we're in July at the time of recording. It's the 10th of July, 2018, by the way, and I'm, as I'm recording this uh, video. And writing goals in NaNoWriMo, they work that you set yourself a word goal for an overall project, and you set yourself a time limit in which you want to achieve that, and then it's a simple matter of dividing the time by the, um, or the, like the, the, the overall or word goal divided by the amount of time that you've got left and then you know how much you need to write on average on a given day and that's sometimes not easy to track unless you really make uh, dedicated notes about that. So uh, Storyist out of the box, much like Word and Pages, will tell you how many words there are in your document. But uh, what other applications do not do, like Word and Pages, they will just give you an updated total. So if we add more words into here, like this, then now we know we have more words than we had before. But that doesn't still doesn't track how many words have I written today, unless I've made a mental note of the word count as it was at the beginning of the day. Let's let's face it, who does that for us? So um, Stories supports you on this journey and keeps you on a word goal. And that's very, very exciting. Sometimes it really is just about putting words on paper and letting it flow out of your fingers and out of a sudden you can come up with the most amazing things and it really is just about perseverance sometimes rather than is it really the right stuff I'm writing. So um, on this note, by the way, I usually, when I write, I don't have just a main document. I also have a secondary document here, which is a bit like what Julia Cameron calls the morning pages. I don't really use it like that, but it is something like a writing diary in which I start just typing to warm up my fingers, to warm up this process of putting thoughts on paper. And it really helps. Sometimes I come up with the most amazing things in the kind of throwaway writing diary that I don't want to really put into the final manuscript. Sometimes I do, but uh, oftentimes I'm sitting there in front of an empty page and I'm thinking, I have other things to say that are not important currently to what I'm trying to write and they should also, they, they also need to come out, they also need to be written and it just sometimes just doesn't really work to write on topic all the time. So give yourself, allow yourself to write on a different document something else and just to keep this, to, to get the mind thinking and to get the typing going and then out of a sudden before you know it you're going to be you've, you've solved your problem and you're back on track and it's a very powerful writing tip i can give you but i, I digress <laughs> more more about writing goals now so this is more about the writing process so the writing goals in stories can be found at the top right corner here this is the show goal information and right now this is a new document here that we've uh, created there's no goal information if i click on that stories doesn't know what is my project goal and what is my daily word goal that i want to achieve so NaNoWriMo, which happens in November every year, by the way, it's an international kind of conglomerate is that on, on NaNoWriMo.org you can join and you can uh, write, I, be, I believe it's at least 50,000 words in a one month period. So if we were to say uh, my writing goal is indeed 50,000 words and uh, if you divide that by 30 days, it's roughly going to be 1,600 words. So you can give yourself that as a daily goal. But you don't have to use it that way. So you don't have to do this or 1,666 words, I believe it would be 0.333, I believe it would be the correct number. But uh, you, you can go for much smaller goals. So if, you, if you're saying you're writing a dissertation and it's supposed to have 10,000 words, then that's also cool, you know. And uh, or if you're saying, actually, I want to stick to maybe 1000 words at least a day, and you find yourself you're frequently over, that's also cool. So you define a goal like that, a project overall goal, this is how long your whole project is going to be. This is how many words you're going to write in the day. And then on the bottom here in this field, this shows you all the text files that you currently have in your documents on the left hand side. I currently only have one, which is the test manuscript. And that is if I tick that, then stories will count 
what I'm putting in there and hold me accountable to that. But if you add other documents, you can also add them here, uh, even in folders, that's also possible. And Stories will be able to track those as well. So it can selectively track which document you'd like to be included in the word goal and which ones you would like to exclude from the word goal. And as soon as you click OK, then it'll come up with this view. So if you want to change your goals later on, you can do that. You just head over here and then you go into Edit Goals. But now you can you get this view and because I've only started this document, there's really not a lot that we can see here. So I'm going to look into a document, uh, my latest manuscript that I've, that I've just published, The Broken Balls. We're going to have a look at that in a minute and it'll show you how much I've stuck to my writing goals there. Just wanted to let you know that. So you've got the, the left thing is a little calendar icon which tells you which days you've met your writing goal in red, yellow and green. Very convenient. And then you have these other two things which let you see how many uh, writing goals you've hit and how much you've written over the last month or last week or so forth. Just one other thing before we look into that, if you create a new document here, say a new text file, and it could be either a novel or a notebook entry or whatever, I'm just going to go for a novel and I'm going to call that perhaps just test one because, you know, it's one of those things. <laughs> if you now head over back and change your goals, then you can see that these two documents are there and you see that the second one is currently not included. So if you wanted for that to be included, then you have to tick that. And you also have to tick that before you start writing. That's just something to keep in mind. Likewise, if you were to create a folder, we haven't even spoken about folders yet, but you can do that. It's just a folder, let's call it folder here. And it just keeps your documents organized. And if you create another text file, perhaps maybe it'll make it a notebook entry this time. And I'm just gonna leave the default there. It'll be now in the folder. And I can also put my test document inside the folder and then I can close the folder, for example. So if you have a folder and you wanna track anything inside the folder, then this is what happens. So you can go up to this writing goal thing and you uh, hit that little thing, go to edit goals, and now you see a little dash. You see the folder, which you can disclose, and you can see that one document is uh, currently tracked and the other one is not. So if you keep adding documents into that folder over time and you want all of them to be tracked, then all you have to do is click this folder and then it'll get this tick mark. So that means all the documents inside a folder will be tracked. Tick it again, then none of that in the folder is going to be tracked. And again, the dash means only a single document or partial part amounts of the document in the folder are being tracked. So that's how that works. Now let me give you an overview of how this graphical representation works. So if I go and open my manuscript here, in which there are many, many uh, words in here um, and many folders. So we're going to talk about how to make that KDP edition, the PDF edition, eBooks. We're going to talk about that in a later chapter and perhaps we're going to use this uh, document as well as a uh, as a kind of a kind of a demo thing of what we can do with that. So again, this is the writing goals. So last month I've written that many words and this was my overall word goal, 28,000 words. So it turns out my, my overall document, let's have a look if I just select that here, the latest version has 132,000. So I've written a lot more than what I had set out to write, very exciting, uh, but it just all came together. And I can also see what I've written last week. So I didn't do a lot because I've been, I've, I'm done with it now, or I can see what happened over the last month which was July, so you know, over the last 30 days, this is what happened over the last 30 days. Or I can also give it a particular kind of the whole project. I've written that many words, can you believe it? So some of them are down to duplications of documents. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute as well. It's sometimes helpful to do that. And on these other three buttons here, um, you can see that I had uh, 85 writing days in total. On 56 of them, I've had I've, I've met the goal. So that's kind of interesting. So let's start at the beginning here. This is the current month in which I haven't met my writing goals here. Those were just corrections, I believe, uh, in the lead up to the publication. But then before that, green means that I have hit a writing goal. And uh, if you click on it, you it tells you how many words I've written on that particular day. 
very exciting. And the yellow means uh, I've nearly reached my goal. I was kind of 80% there or something. And uh, white means, or this no circle at all, means there was no writing session. So I didn't open the document on that day and I didn't do any writing on that day. But on all these days, I've met my goals and that's um, you know very interesting and you can also track the history of the project so i did uh, a lot in may and then i didn't do i did a, a little bit in april and uh, perhaps not a lot uh, not as much as in june and i did a bit of march and some of it i did in february so it tracks all that tracks kind of your writing history and that's you know that's very interesting and the middle button here that gives you a little um, overview of how well you were doing this is a little bit like the graphical representation that they give you at NaNoWriMo and when I first uh, started NaNoWriMo I believe stories did not have this functionality the word goals in there so it was very interesting to see that graph go up and again you can you can uh, see what you did over the last 30 days and how many goals you've reached and how how your graph goes up and how well you are on track so this is not meant to pressure you this is very important to realize this is not meant to tell you off if you haven't written a day or so but if you have a deadline in mind and you want to stick to it this is a great help it even gives you when you reach your writing goal it comes with a little notification up here and a little sound effect that says hey you've reached your writing goal for the day so i find that very encouraging whenever that happens so this is this is um this is beautiful i, I find that is a really um, exciting addition to storyist and um, yeah again it's just, it's just those little things that really make me go back to this program time and time again that's all I can tell you about writing goals on the Mac OS version. The iOS version supports that as well. Um, speaking of which, stay tuned for a demonstration of how this works on iOS. Um, and I'll see you for that in the next video.